Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another uh, Canadian Forces Soldier React. Uh, and today we're looking at enlisted ranks. Uh, so, of the U United States Army, of course. Um, so, they're actually pretty different. So, there's, this causes a lot of confusion a lot of times. Um, we've got a couple of ranks that you guys don't have. And... Um, we have, uh, we use names differently uh, than you do, and you're going to see it here in just a minute. And uh, it looks like there's three parts to this series. There's the enlisted ranks, the warrant officer ranks, and the, uh, and the officer ranks. So I'm going to do each one of those separately, and we'll compare and contrast with, uh, with the Canadian Army. So let's go. Dramatic music. Bum, bum, bum. Ranks. What do they mean? What's it all about? Let's find out in this three-part episode. Army ranks provide a system... Whoa. <laughs> One second. Let's just go back a second. I just want to look at that salute. Let's find out in this three-part episode. Army ranks provide a system of wow. that indicates a soldier's level of expertise... I would have gotten smacked if I had done that. ...authority inside that profession. First... Let's talk about the enlisted ranks. Enlisted soldiers are the foundation of the army. Always. They have specific specialties within an army unit, perform specific job functions, and have the knowledge that ensures the success of their unit's current mission within the army. There are 13 ranks. You'll notice that each rank has an E number. This denotes their pay grade. All right, so I'm gonna stop it here. Uh, just so I can quickly uh, go over how this kind of works with, uh, with the Canadian Forces. So um, the first rank in the Canadian Forces is actually Private Recruit. Um, I'm thinking it's got no chevrons. I'm not sure because, uh, yeah, you guys start at E2. I'm assuming there's one before E2. Well, uh, why they're not showing it here, I don't know. But we have Private recruit then we have private basic uh so that uh, a private recruit obviously is in recruit school private basic is once you passed uh recruit school and uh even battle school uh, if you're in the infantry and you're not wearing anything on your arm uh in either of those and then private trained is when you get your first hook and canada's hooks are flipped from uh what the american hooks are uh, but the private trained would be equivalent to your, uh, well, I see you got your, your specialist and your E4 kind of the same thing. So I guess private trained would be kind of close, closer to your uh, E3. Um, and then your corporal after that is your E4. And then uh, Canada, after that, Canada has what's called a master corporal. Uh, the master corporal is your first level of uh, combat commander or your lowest level of leadership. Uh, so that would be about equivalent to your E5. And then a Canadian sergeant would be much closer to your E6. And then here's where it differs wildly. Um, Canada calls the next ranks after that. These are, you're now in your senior NCO ranks, okay? Um, but they're still enlisted personnel. Uh, the next would be a, uh, a warrant officer. So about the, the equivalent of your E7. Then you'd have your master warrant officer. So a warrant officer would uh, typically be in charge of a platoon uh, or in charge of company stores, um, uh, QM, quartermaster, that kind of thing. So he's at about that level. And then uh, a master warrant officer would be the senior uh, enlisted member of a company. So a master warrant officer would be also called the company sergeant major. Um, and he would be in charge of all of the enlisted in an entire, uh, infantry company. And then after that, you get your chief warrant officer, which is also called a regimental sergeant major. He would be a battalion. Uh, he would be the, the senior NCO in a battalion. And then from, from there, it's really just appointments. So from, from this, uh, level up, it's more like appointments. So this would be your, uh, battalion, uh, Master Warrant Officer, or sorry, Battalion Chief Warrant Officer or Battalion Sergeant Major, Regimental Sergeant Major. And then from here, uh, 
you would go to a base chief warrant officer. This would be equivalent to a uh, the highest enlisted rank on the base, the entire base. Uh, and then you would get a, um, I think it's called a force chief warrant officer. So uh, Land Force Central Area would have a chief warrant officer that would be in charge of the, the highest enlisted rank in the entire Land Force Central Area. And then you would have the forces chief warrant officer. There's only one guy uh, that gets this. Um, and he's the the highest enlisted rank in the entire Canadian forces. I think they have well, they have one per per um, uh, Army, Navy, Air Force. I think there's one of each. Uh, and in the Navy, they call them something different. Uh, we can talk about that later. But let's get it uh, further. Private E1 is the most junior rank. Most soldiers receive this rank during basic combat training. This rank does not carry an insignia. Private E2 is the second most junior rank and the first promotion most enlisted soldiers can earn after completing basic combat training. The private's job is to apply the new skills and knowledge learned during basic training and to continue to learn how to follow orders given by their higher rank supervisors. Private First Class E3. Soldiers are generally promoted to so, I'm not quite sure what this guy is trying to get across here. So, a private, uh, a private basic, so with no hooks on his arms. And, well, there's not a lot of difference between a private basic and a private trained, to be honest. Um, a private trained will sometimes get uh, tasked as like a small party commander for... You know, if you if you've got to carry a bunch of water, you send three guys. The the guy with the single hook on his arm is going to be in charge. Um, but it doesn't really mean much. But the privates are the workhorse. <laughs> well, I know a lot of corporals who would disagree with this. Uh, yeah, uh, corporals are a breed all their own. But the the privates are the ones that that do pretty much everything. They're the the basic riflemen. Um, and they're, they're the backbone, uh, of the army. To this level within a year by request of a supervisor. Their primary role is to carry out orders and complete missions. Specialist E4. Specialists can manage other lower ranked enlisted soldiers. A soldier can be promoted to this rank after... Yeah, so a specialist, I believe a specialist, like, you've got a specialist E4 and, and a corporal E4... I think they're equivalent, uh, but in the uh, in the Canadian Forces, corporals are often uh, two ICs of a section. Um, and, I mean, I said earlier, corporals are breed all their own. Corporals are, are the level of rank that gets shit done in the Army. Privates are the level of rank that do it, but the corporals are the level of rank that gets it done. Um... I, in fact, I have a friend uh, who's, I don't know if he's retired yet. I don't think he's retired yet, or if he is, he just retired. Um, he was in at least 35 years, and he, the last time I spoke to him this year, he was still a corporal. Uh, so there are such a thing as corporal for life um, in in the Canadian military. And they, the corporals and the privates together are, are, are really, I mean, they do everything. After serving a minimum of two years and attending a training class, recruits with a four-year degree serve a minimum to, of two years and attend a training class. That's a really interesting way to say it. So I've said this before in a lot of other videos. In Canada, when you get to battalion, you start your training. Like, seriously start your training when you get to battalion as a private. Uh... And I'm going to do another video uh, on all of the different training courses, advanced uh, level training courses that you can get in battalion for infantry weapons and, and job classification specializations uh, in the, the Canadian Infantry Battalion. But there's a lot of it. And literally, I had my first force course. I was in battalion one week and they sent me on the recce course. Uh, so three months later, I had my, my recce course uh, under my belt. And I was literally, that's all I had done in the battalion uh, that entire time. So I was, 
by the time I was a year in the army, basic training, battle school, and then my recce course, uh, that, that took up my first year in the battalion. And then we started going on exercise. Degree may enter basic combat training as a specialist. Corporal E4. Corporals are the base level of the non-commissioned officer or NCO ranks. They serve as team leader of the smallest army unit and are responsible for individual training, personal appearance, and cleanliness of soldiers. Yeah, so generally that happens similarly in Canada too, although according to the TONE, it's supposed to be a sergeant in charge of a section at, with a Master Corporal 2 IC. Um, but more often than not, it's the Master Corporal in charge of the section with a corporal, and sometimes even a private as a 2 IC. Sergeant E5. Sergeants typically lead a fire team of around five soldiers. Yeah, so this this, had, uh, this is the equivalent of a master corporal in Canada. Um, and they can lead um, a fire team of, of five soldiers, but more often than not, they're leading a section of ten soldiers. Sergeants oversee soldiers in their daily tasks and are expected to set a standard for lower ranked soldiers to live up to. Yeah, th this is the same. Staff Sergeant, E6. And, and they do most of the training, or, or a good portion of the training uh, also. Staff Sergeants lead a squad made up of 8 to 16 soldiers. Often... So, uh, again, in Canada, uh, sergeants can sometimes lead a section of 10-ish soldiers, but more often than not, the sergeant's gonna be uh, in charge of the platoon um, or maybe um, uh, special uh, sections like the heavy weapons debt or something. They'll, there'll be a, like a junior sergeant on the heavy weapons debt and then a senior sergeant uh, on as the platoon warrant officer. It's supposed to be a warrant officer in charge of a platoon, but more often than not, it's a sergeant. Staff sergeants will have one or more sergeants under his or her leadership. They are responsible for developing... Yeah, again, uh, yeah, a sergeant will often have, uh, if he's a platoon sergeant, he'll have three to six master corporals uh, reporting to him depending on what's what the platoon makeup is like. Developing, maintaining, and using the full range of a... That was a 60 millimeter mortar, I think. That's... Actually, it looked even thinner than a 60 millimeter mortar. Huh, maybe a 40 millimeter mortar? Soldier's potential. Sergeant First Class, E7. As key assistants and advisors to platoon leaders, Sergeant's First Class generally have 10 to 15 years of Army experience. Yeah, so this would be a Canadian Forces warrant officer. Um, the, the smallest thing that a warrant officer do, will do in the Canadian Forces would be senior enlisted man in a platoon. And really, uh, like he said, um, you know, 12 to 15 years minimum experience, whereas the lieutenant coming in is going to have, you know, sometimes this is their first posting, uh, or at most they're going to have like four years of experience. So the, the warrant officer is really teaching that uh, lieutenant, his, you know, the difference between his ass and a hole in the ground. Master Sergeant, E8. Master Sergeants are the principal non-commissioned officers at the battalion level and higher. First Sergeant... Yeah, so... Master Sergeant... Yeah, Master Sergeant. What you guys would call a Master Sergeant, we call a... Um, a... Uh, master Warrant Officer. And they are the senior enlisted for a company. So a master warrant officer could easily have 120 uh, odd troops uh, that he's responsible for. Sergeant E8. First. Yeah, so this would be a chief warrant officer and they are uh, battalion level. So a chief warrant officer is going to have probably four to 600 enlisted uh, that he's responsible for. Sergeants are the lifeblood of a company. They're providers, disciplinarians, and counselors. In addition, they also instruct other sergeants, advise the commander, and help train all enlisted soldiers as well as assist oh. officers at the company level. I might have mixed one up there. Sergeant Major E9. Okay. 
That's the chief Sergeant's warrant officer. Are the, the other one's a master warrant officer. expert in their technical field, primary advisor on policy development and analytical reviewer of regulatory guidance. They serve as the senior enlisted advisor to primary staff officers at the battalion or higher. Command Sergeant Major E9. Command Sergeant's Major are senior enlisted advisors to the commanding officer. They carry... Oh, okay. Well, that, that's your chief warrant officer right there. There's one chief warrant officer in a battalion, and that chief warrant officer reports to and only to the, the uh, battalion commander, uh, the CO, commanding officer, the battalion commanding officer. So you go down from there, and then you get your... That's, so that's your regimental surge. I don't know why they call them a regimental sergeant major at the battalion level, uh, but don't ever try calling them something else because you'll be in a world of hurt. Um, but at the, so one step down from that master warrant officer, that's your company sergeant major. So, and those are the only two levels where they, they call them sergeant major. It's company sergeant major and regimental sergeant major, and that's it. Again, don't get it wrong. We on policies and standards and advise the commander on the performance, training, appearance and conduct of enlisted soldiers. Their, their opinions matter. Sergeant Major of the Army, E9. There is only one Sergeant Major of the Army. The SMA oversees all non-commissioned officers. This position serves as the senior enlisted advisor and consultant to the Chief of Staff of the Army. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's where I, again, I think I mixed it up just a little bit. That would be our force chief warrant officer, uh, so land force central area, uh, and that would be army uh, kind of a thing. And then I, I don't remember if there is one uh, chief warrant officer. If there's any Canadians watching this, and, and you know better than I do, leave it down in the comments. I don't know if there's one chief warrant officer for all three branches, Army, Navy, Air Force, or if each of them get one. Uh, let me know. If you're interested in learning more about Army ranks, visit army.mil slash ranks. Don't forget to stay tuned for part two on warrant officer ranks. Yeah, so uh, as I was saying in the beginning, this is kind of the biggest misconception between uh, Canada and America. There's no such thing as a warrant officer rank in uh, the Canadian forces. Um, and I'll, I'll take a look at them. Uh, we'll, we'll do that in the, in the part two, uh, later, but, uh, we just, we don't have this, at least the same concept that you do. We have, uh, our warrant officers are non-commissioned officers, exactly how the, uh, the enlisted ranks they just showed were. So I don't know. Is that as clear as mud? Hopefully I, uh, I enlightened you. Uh, if not, you know, ask me questions down in the comments. If you like the video, please leave a like, subscribe. And uh, otherwise, I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye, guys.